This is one of a series of programs having to do with the problems of education, the city, the state, and the nation. And today we're fortunate to have Dr. Candace de Rusi, who is a member of the Board of Trustees of the State University of New York and chairwoman of the Committee on Academic Standards. Uh, Dr. de Rusi is a former professor of uh, language and literature, but she is a leading reformer in the uh, area of education. And uh, she has been uh, especially involved just recently in getting the state university to approve uh, a core curriculum. But before we go into that, uh, Dr. de Rusi, I want to ask you, tell us something about the state uh, university of New York. How big just, is it and what is it Just in general terms, Herman, the State University of New York s serves approximately 400,000 students. I mean, so it is the nation's largest system of public higher education. About twice as large as the city university. Quite, quite large. Um, the, we have 64, we operate 64 institutions. Uh, 16 of them are the so-called state-operated colleges that provide undergraduate degrees. We have colleges of dentistry. We, we grant degrees in medicine. Uh, uh, in dentistry and so forth. So we do, we offer a vast array of educational services. We offer vocational and professional education as well as undergraduate degrees. Our 30 community colleges uh, offer two years, two year degrees. And so we have a, we, we offer a vast range of education. And you're in every city except for New York City, right? This is so. You are in this Albany is so. and Syracuse and We are in and Albany and Binghamton, and Binghamton and Buffalo and Stony Brook and so forth. We have four very large research centers. So we are a vast, vast operation. Now, what surprised me when I first read about your efforts is that uh, uh, you're talking about a core curriculum as if it is a, a, a new idea and a, and a change in American education. Uh, I always thought uh, when I went to City College uh, that it was understood that we all had a basic core curriculum. Well, this is the essential problem. Uh, traditionally, it was understood that the mainstay of undergraduate studies would be a core of liberal studies, a core of broad, distinguished studies required of all undergraduates. Uh, as one writer put it, these, these courses would consist in conveying to students the best, some of the best that has been written and thought and created throughout human history. But unfortunately, over the last more than 30 years, what we have, the National Association of Scholars uh, described it as a dissolution of general education. That is a breakdown in general education. And why, why did that take place? Well, what has happened there has first of all been a breakdown, frankly, in accountability on the part of higher education leaders. That's one reason for this. There are a number of reasons. However, the, the net effect of all this is that what were once upon a time rigorous general education core requirements, these requirements have broken down. At the nation's most prestigious universities and colleges, for example, students can now graduate very, very often without having had a single course in history, in literature, in mathematics. So the course requirements have indeed broken down. But the second point, Herman, that is of very great importance is that the actual courses have proliferated. The courses that are allowed to satisfy what, what the general. Of, what kind of courses have been substituted for the uh, basic courses? Well, a plethora of all kinds of studies. There's been division upon division of so-called multicultural courses. But I'll give you some examples. Actually, some of the examples are quite laughable. And these are examples taken from around the country. Right, I mean, sure. such things as Elvis as anthology, or uh, the literature of sports, or uh, let us take a sociology of Star Trek. Mm -hmm. uh, here's another one. Well, I'm a fan, <laughs> fan of Star Trek, but not, <laughs> not in college. Not, not, not as a course yeah. that satisfies core curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our students are studying daytime TV serials. Uh, another course title that comes to mind is uh, The Literature of Sports. Another one is Lies I Use to Prove My Masculinity. So there's this plethora of all kinds of courses that can only be described as extremely narrow 
and general education core courses should be broad. Okay, now the they core? Should be co not, not only that, not only narrow, but often quite esoteric, and you might say, again, I'll repeat the word laughable. Okay, now the... So what, it's a, what, it is really quite shameful. Okay, now what exactly is the core curriculum that the uh, SUNY board has now approved? Yes. On, uh, in December, the board, after over two years of consultation with the faculty and experts, and after two years, more than two years, of deliberation in my own committee, the one that I chair, that is the Academic Standards Committee, we had a faculty senate uh, task force report from the two faculty senates. We heard from a number of experts, as I say, in December we adopted a resolution that requires that all of our undergraduates have at a minimum, that they study at a minimum a set of 10 courses in, to be specific, in mathematics, natural science, social science, American history, Western civilization, other world civilizations, the humanities, the arts, foreign languages we intend to reinstate, we are reinstating, and then finally a course entitled, that is to say an area, an area entitled Basic Communication, Reasoning, and Information Management. Okay, that's so, one so that's 10 courses. A set at, of 10. And at how many credits? Three credits? 30 per credits, three so per. It's, so it's only 30 credits, so it a leaves a lot of room. Of 30. Frankly, leaves I, a lot of room for other uh, courses, right? Yes, and right? frankly, Including I Including the ones you mentioned earlier. Exactly. They and we have also specified that these courses be of a broad nature when appropriate. I mean, for example, a mathematics course might be have depth as opposed to breadth. But we have s specified that when appropriate, that they are broad in nature, that they are coherent, that this core is coherent. That is to say, that takes into to consideration interdisciplinary implications here. We have said that, uh, th that they should be focused. Uh, we have also, and this is terribly important, in our resolution, we specify that the faculty is urged, our faculties are urged, to come up with alternative okay, but core curriculums, listen, which is a very creative suggestion. Right, but it seems to me that that is uh, exactly what I had, and even less when I went even to less. City College. But I read that a large number of uh, faculty members object to what you're doing, and they say that you are uh, micromanaging uh, the university. Well, I mean, nothing could be further than the truth. In the first place, we must recall, and it is time that this nation recalls, that its governing boards, its higher education governing boards, have sworn an oath to uphold academic standards, to oversee academic standards. In other words, we have a responsibility, we trustees, we have a statutory duty to actually put in place knowledge standards, broad knowledge standards. So it is time, quite frankly, that more boards across the country, and I would urge CUNY to consider these matters as well, that we put, that we oversee the, the, our knowledge standards. Quite okay. frankly, now back to the faculty, because that's your question. Yeah, because what, what right. bothers me is why right. should I, the faculty is predominantly, I would assume, made up of people who have doctorates, who have PhDs, right. who are scholars, and, and who have tenure. Why would they be, why would they object to something well, as basic as what you're talking about? Herman, in the first place, I, I have said to you that we have consulted at great length with the right. faculty, in my opinion, and we have deliberate, deliberated at great length on this issue. Now, the faculty, whereas we have set these areas, we have set these requirements of areas, the faculty is free to design the courses. The faculty, of course, has the responsibility of adding more requirements to this core if it sees fit. The faculty may, and this is very important, and I hope it will lead to very creative, uh, vital general education core curricula, the faculty is urged by us to offer alternative general education curricula. The faculty is, of course, free. It, it is its duty to select the books and the materials for the courses. There will be no, there is no, there will be no, absolutely no interference, of course, with the point of view taken in these courses. So there is no interference from an academic stand, from an now, academic freedom point of view. The core curriculum is going to be uh, mandated beginning when? The fall, the freshman in the fall of, two thou of the year 2000. And, and will it cover uh, the senior colleges and community colleges? It, it or covers just community college? all of the state-operated colleges, our state-operated colleges that offer 
undergraduate education, that's one thing, but we also, in our resolution, we also urge the community, in fact, we direct the community colleges to adopt, to put in place general education of the kind that facilitates the transfer of our students, of our two-year students, into the four-year institutions. So that's a terribly important question that you just asked. In other words, this really is a common system-wide uh, requirement that we have put in. So the answer is yes, all, but in a, in a different sense, because the, obviously the community colleges will not offer all of this, but they are to design their general education to facilitate the transfer of two-year students, two-year graduates into the four-year institution, which, by the way, is of great fairness to students. Tell me, Student, what, what, what inspired you to uh, be so passionate about this issue? Well, I think that um, f a number of things. I, I am concerned, if you will, um, about what I perceive to be a, and what many, what many studies show, to be a growing ignorance in this country. I mean, really across the board in many respects. But in this respect, with respect to undergraduates, our undergraduates are relatively ignorant you know, by the standards of, of their forebears. Did, did you feel that that applied to you when you uh, went to and undergraduate? I think that this problem exists. This problem has been increasing in gravity over the last 30 years. This is a problem that has developed over the last 30, more than 30 years. Where did but, you get your education? Well, I was, I was educated at St. Mary's Dominican College in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, I received an MA degree at the Sorbonne doing the work for the master's degree in French at the Sorbonne, of course, in Paris. Mm -hmm. And then I returned shortly after that to do a PhD in French with a Spanish minor at Tulane University. So that, was, that is my, my background. But you know, back to this question of why I feel passionately about this. Um, I am deeply concerned for today's students, and in particular, our disadvantaged students. What, what, they, what they do not receive, what they do not get if we do not provide them with strong general education is number one, they are less able to fulfill themselves in their personal lives without this strong knowledge base. Secondly, and very important, they are less able to participate fully in American civic life. And I recall and I share the view of the journalist Walt Lippmann, who over 50 years ago, he said that we are sending young men and young women into the world from our colleges and universities bereft of the creative principle of their own civilization. And he said, if this continues, no civilization, and particularly a democracy, can survive such, a gro such growing ignorance. We'll be back after this announcement. Thank you. I'm Judd Hirsch. I graduated City College in 1960. Yes, I'm an actor, and I've played many major roles in my life. Most Cooney graduates are not actors, but they are well prepared to play major roles in their own special lives. Leon Letterman, a City College graduate, is one of 11 CUNY graduates awarded a Nobel Prize. Jillian Reynolds, a Hunter College graduate, became the third African-American woman to recently receive a PhD in physics from MIT. City University prepares thousands for their roles in life. We're talking today with Dr. Candace DeRussi, who is a member of the Board of Trustees of the State University of New York, uh, about the uh, establishment of the core curriculum which her committee, which she chairs, Academic Standards uh, Committee, approved uh, last December. What is the uh, effect uh, on the students of not having a core curriculum? Well, I think uh, I brought, I began to speak of that, Herman, um, and I think I made the statement that today's undergraduates, our graduates, or relatively ignorant by the standards of their forebearers from a, from a historic point of view. Uh, there are a plethora of studies which indicate uh, exactly, give indications of this. One survey, for example, uh, points out that half of our graduates, they cannot calculate 
believe it or not, change from a restaurant are these meal. Graduates these from, are college, from all universities. College graduates that from all universities. This is from across the country. A variety of surveys, federal surveys, and and others, um, that a that a large numbers, let us say, just in general, of our graduates cannot calculate the change from a restaurant meal. Uh, they cannot interpret a bus schedule. Uh, large numbers of them cannot place the Columbus's discovery within the correct half century. Uh, quite a number of them cannot distinguish the words of Churchill from those of Stalin. They cannot distinguish the ideas of Karl Marx from those of the U.S. Constitution. Tell me, tell more than, me. The, 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 the details are of interest. More than 40 percent of them cannot identify when the Civil War occurred and most could not link works by Plato and Shakespeare with their authors and finally okay. many 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 could not identify Martin Luther King Jr's letter from the Birmingham jail but it seems that to me that kind of, but, of thing but is this true of the Ivy League uh, colleges absolutely. as well absolutely in fact uh, the, the in fact there are indications that at the the nation's most prestigious private universities and colleges that the problem is worse than it is at the nation's public well, some of this stuff uh, it seems to me that uh, you should have gotten in the public schools, in high school. It's not that complicated. Well, this, this is another problem altogether. Yeah. I mean, the, this, this is a very, very fundamental problem. In other words, we, we're discussing today curriculum, but there are other problems. Is The breakdown of K-12 through education is a scandal in this country. In other words, our students are coming uh, grossly uh, less prepared for college-level work than, than they were in the past. And well, this, this must change. That, By the way, we mentioned this in our resolution. We mentioned that in strengthening the college standards that we are acting in tandem, in concert with the regents in this regard who are raising standards at the K-12 through level and that this will spur our K-12 through institutions on to Well, tell me how bad the problem to is because, properly. because um, we have the problem at the city university, but of course very large percentage of the students we get come from uh, the city uh, high schools. And we find that in the community colleges, over 87% of the students require some degree of remediation because they can't pass a test in reading, writing, or arithmetic. And I have been told consistently that this problem does not exist in the suburbs. Now, you get the students you get at, at SUNY come from the suburbs. You have the same problem? we do? Uh, there is some remediation within SUNY, but the question is, I mean, the, the problem is far less grave and extensive in SUNY than it is in CUNY. No question about that. Throughout the nation, as you know, 81 percent of the nation's colleges and universities have some sort of remedial, but basic that, remedial but is work. is that because of students who come from cities or students who come from suburbs? Uh, I think the problem is worse. Uh, probably from those students who come from inner city uh, environments. I think the problem is worse in that regard, but I don't have a study to indicate that. I just know that our colleges and universities throughout the country, 81% of them, are remediating the students who come in, um, and that, uh, that obviously the answer to this is for the higher education leaders in our colleges and universities to throw back, to hurl back this task where it belongs, to place it where it belongs, that is, at the K-12 through level, and demand performance from the K-12 through schools. Well, that goes back to the elimination of social promotion, no? Absolutely. Which we have, which we have in New Abs York City. Absolutely. Uh, the, uh, even at the federal level, that is being uh, offered at this point, that notion. But we, we should stop social promotion. There's no doubt about that. That's a disgrace. And that ill serves the students, and in particular, disadvantaged students. And, and by the way, just back to general education for one second, uh, there are studies to indicate that a strong background in general education is of particular urgent need. It is particularly urgently needed by disadvantaged students who must make their way in the workplace and so forth. So wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be a good idea to have something like the core curriculum in the uh, high school levels uh, too? Oh, absolutely. <coughs> and in the better, in the, in, in the best high schools in this country, there is a, a, a uh, there are requirements that really are compatible with. I mean, they are they they, they do the same thing. They they are 
requirements in basic subjects. So there is sort of a core in the, be in the better Because colleges. if the students start off with that background, then it would be easier for them to uh, appreciate the core curriculum at the uh, university and, level. And, and by the way, Herman, to pursue a higher level of general education at the university level. And, and, and that is one of the reasons we speak of the need or the desirability of creating alternative core curricula. We have also spoken in our Academic Standards Committee and so forth, and our board is aware of this, we would like to see honors programs. In other words, a level of high-level general education core, uh, core curricula choices for students who, for example, have already had foreign languages or who have a strong background. In other words, instead of waving them out of these studies, what I would like to see are honors programs that are available for these students who have a very strong general education background coming in. Well, the governor and the state legislature must have a high opinion of the state university because recently you were given an additional responsibility and that is the responsibility for establishing 50 charter schools throughout the state. That's this exactly legislature right. and the governor approved 100 charter schools. The Board of Regions has jurisdiction over 50. The state university has jurisdiction over 50. Exactly. Uh, what plans uh, are being made by the state university? Well, as a ma this? matter of fact, that uh, odd that you should speak about that, but at this uh, most recent Academic Standards Committee of ours, we had a presentation by Scott Steffi, who is the newly appointed president of the Charter Schools Institute of the State University of New York, which will set policy and uh, direct us in how we um, allow, which, which schools are allowed to apply. They will have general jurisdiction over the uh, application. We have this jurisdiction, but this questions of how to go about this will be studied by the Institute, the Charter Institute of the State University of New York. We will, in other words, be able to grant licenses, grant charters, that is, operating licenses to the various schools that uh, entities that apply to us to become charter schools which are as you know uh, quite well Herman they will be schools wh which operate which answer to the state in terms of standards. But they'll be answering to uh, well, they, they'll state be accountable, university they'll too. be accountable uh, to the regents that is for, hold, for um, adhering to high standards they will be accountable but they will answer to us in terms of the standards, we will set the standards by which they operate. So for practical purposes... And we will license them. You are put in a very unusual position because now the state university and actually has jurisdiction over schools and elementary schools, junior high schools and high schools. That's so exactly you will have... Uh, we will have the opportunity have to uh, license these schools which function, which will function with a minimum of regulation by the state a, a minimum of bureaucratic rules uh, which will have great freedom in terms of their curricula and so forth uh, and we will we will have control over these standards and this is a, a, a very grave responsibility but it's one we welcome the Board of Trustees welcomes with uh, great eagerness so maybe you could see to it that uh, some of the standards that you're talking about for the university level could be incorporated beginning in the early grades that that is our intention that is fully our intention. And now if somebody who's watching wants to uh, establish a charter school, what, what should they do? Well, I think the first step is to be in touch with the State University of New York and with Scott Steffi, uh, who is now the president of the institute, and he will have, he, it will be the manager, uh, if you will, the chief executive officer, if you will, of this effort. And I think that would be the way to go. First of all, to gather information. We're in the process right now of formulating the, the, the method by which uh, schools will apply. This is going to happen very quickly, too, just now, within the next few months. Now, these charter schools, suppose somebody's watching, they want to start, uh, could it be an elementary school, junior high school, or high school? Or could it be a Any combination? It could be a combination, and it could be either of the, the three entities that you just mentioned. And, and what would they have to show? They have to show that they, are, they have a group ready to uh, run the school? Well, that, that I think, of course. But um, as I say, the guidelines uh, concerning the 
the, the, the applicants, for example, the, the qualifications of the applicants, that's being decided now. That's being deliberated and discussed. And this institute will study this question that you ask. So I can't be very specific with you right now. It's simply not set as yet. Okay. The one, but, um, uh, the one that but area. But we would welcome queries okay. at the State University of New York in Albany directed to Scott Steffi. Okay. The one area that I know you have a special interest in addition is teacher education. Exactly. What's the oh, problem yes. there? Well, uh, teachers' education uh, is, um, I think, in, in, in great trouble uh, in terms of um, we have teachers at this point who really, frankly, many, time, many, many instances are simply not properly qualified to, that? to be teaching. The, teacher, the schools of teachers' education, the institutions of teachers' education, teacher preparedness is not what it could be. It has also... Uh, like general education, broken down and become very diluted. My, the, the, the Academic Standards Committee, I and my colleagues on the committee and also the Board of Trustees, the whole Board of Trustees, is very interested in this question. And we are beginning to study it very carefully. My view on this would be that we should require that our future teachers major and minor major and or minor in the subjects that they will be teaching. My other recommendation would be that we require a certain average, a certain scholastic average of our teachers' education students for them to remain in school. You don't have uh, an average now? Well, I don't know. The, I don't know. Um, we're studying that very question. Provost Peter Salins is studying that. We're, we're, he's gathering a report that is in draft form right now. And in about a month, I'll have an answer to that. And you'll have to come back when the I, report I, is ready because I would be delighted. we're out of time. And thank Herman, you thank coming. you so much. You can reach us by email at our website, www.cunytv.cuny.edu, to let us know what you think, or write to us at CUNY TV, 25 West 43rd Street, Suite 1220, New York, New York, 10036.